Hello, everybody. Adam Parks with another episode of Receivables Roundtable. Today, we're going to have a detailed data discussion. I'm very excited to have some uh, very knowledgeable guests participating today. I have Mr. Kevin Flairledge from Unifund and Recovery Decision Science, who is a uh, Tableau's master and, and really just a master of data. And I also have Mr. Jason Richardson, who is part of the National Community Reinvestment Coalition. And today we're going to talk a little bit about uh, basically the needs of this charitable organization and how Unifund and RDS and, and Kevin and his team were able to actually provide some assistance here. So I want to get out of the way because we were just having such a great conversation prior to kicking this off and you guys are clearly experts in your space. So Kevin, can you tell us a little bit about yourself and about Unifund and RDS? Yeah, so my name is Kevin Flerlidge. I am the uh, managers, uh, manager of business intelligence for Unifund and Recovery Dishes and Science. We're in the collections industry and um, recovery decision science specifically is, is really about the technology behind um, how we you know, can prioritize um, account decisioning and, and such. So uh, it's really just a technology company kind of in, in that collections industry. Um, my job is really business intelligence. We, we build a lot of dashboards. We use a, a product called Tableau to um, help us with business decisions, help us uh, see where we have outliers, see where we have problems, catch those problems before, before they come problems. And sometimes just to give us overviews in, on, on, you know, where we are to date with financials and, and such. So, mm -hmm. um, and you mentioned as well, uh, I'm, I'm a Tableau Zen master. That That is an actual real thing. <laughs> People hear that and they say, well, you know, that sounds like this made up. There are 43 in the world right now. And it's something that's selected by Tableau, the company itself. Um, and it's for people that have mastered the software, collaborate with others and, and teach others. So uh, it's a great honor. Fantastic. Jason, I, I know you're doing some important work over there as well. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself and your organization? Yeah, sure. My name is Jason Richardson. I'm the Director of Research for National Community Reinvestment Coalition. NCRC is a member organization. We have about 600 member groups across the country. Most of them are involved in fair banking or fair lending space. There's a lot mm -hmm. of housing counseling agencies, uh, some local cities and, and county governments, um, but mostly it's nonprofits. So mostly it's uh, small teams of people working on housing or banking issues in their community, trying to encourage more investment in low or moderate income areas. And low and moderate income is a definition where the uh, the neighborhood has a median income that's about 80% or less of the of the median income of the of the you know surrounding metro area. So think about your lower income neighborhoods in your community that's where we operate and we encourage banks and other lenders to invest in businesses and in homes and in construction you know of, of new properties in those areas and um we 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 have frequently get a lot of requests from our members for help with data and analysis and at, you know i've been doing this now a few years and, and what i'd found was that um 90 of the questions were for the same thing our members wanted to know who was lending in their community who was making business loans in their community and where were bank branches located at. Mm -hmm. So a few years ago, my team developed, uh, you know, kind of a standardized report that, that originally was just a PowerPoint that we would provide to members. And over time that kind of evolved, we became a little more uh, adept at working with the data. And we, we, uh, we wanted to, you know, build out a, a cloud database with all of this data in it because there was nothing, nothing available like that. Um, it was very difficult to get most of this data. It was very difficult to work with. It was very, it was very difficult to link it together. Mm -hmm. And then eventually the Tableau Foundation uh, helped us get on, you know, started with Tableau. And we found that it was the perfect tool for blending this data and working with it and visualizing it. Um, but, but if you've worked with Tableau, you know, there, there's, a, there's a pretty big uh, uh, learning curve there where you, you, know, you can get kind of good pretty quickly, but to get really good, it takes time and it takes help. And so we, we reached out to Tableau Foundation again, and they, they put a call out and Jeff and Kevin uh, from RDS answered that call and, and, and offered to help us. Um, and I, you know, I don't know, Kevin, you wanna fill in any more there, I guess? Yeah. 
Yeah, I should I should note that uh, Jeff Jeff Schaefer is the chief operating officer of Unifund. He is a fellow Tableau Zen master. Um, he's actually what they call a Hall of Fame Zen master. He was a Zen master for five years and just got nominated into the uh, inducted into the Hall of Fame for Zen masters, a title that only eleven other people share in this entire world. So very, um, he, he really knows his stuff. So so yeah, I mean that's exactly how it happened. Um, Tableau kind of put out a call on an internal um, Slack channel. And Jeff suggested since we were in, you know, related industries that we might be able to, to help. Um, and so, yeah, we, we met with, with Jason and, and team and really just talked about their needs. And, and I'll say that Jason and his team, you know, mentioned it on our pre-calls that he, the, the analysis, the, you know, they're the subject matter experts. They, their analysis was really well done. Um, but as, as Jason kind of alluded to, it was the Tableau side of things that, that seemed to, uh, that, that we wanted to ramp up a little bit, improve some of the visuals, make them you know, quicker to insight. And that's really all, all it's about is let's give your users, your viewers quick insights so that they can make decisions. Um, and we wanted to review, you know, really kind of eliminate some of the manual work that Jason and his team were, were having to do as well. So we got involved and, and uh, were able to come up with something that, uh, you know, Jason, it sounds like your members are, are pretty pleased with. Yeah. Wow. Um, so uh, since we released it, uh, you know, we had a staff briefing on it and some of the folks that have worked with this data for, for some time, I, I think the term they used was blown away uh, <laughs> by it. Cause like, like I said, that this, this data is not only uh, some extraordinarily difficult to, to get, it's not big data, but it's, but it's complex. Mm -hmm. So every year there's about 14 million uh, records of mortgage transactions that are published. Uh, there's a million or more uh, small business uh, records that are included in this and about 180,000 or so bank branch locations. And none of these data sets are really made to work together. So we've had to build crosswalk files that link them together and, and um, you know, geographically it's, it's easy to go ahead and, and, uh, and link these types of lending together. But there's a lot of work that goes into, uh, into doing that. So a lot of folks had never seen anything like this. So when we, started, uh, when we started doing the reports, they were popular, the original reports that we had to do manually, but it would take us a couple of hours mm -hmm. to pull together all the different data sets, put them in a format, and then, and then put them into, you know, at first, like I said, PowerPoint. Um, and then, you know, later, even when we moved into using Tableau, it still took us time because we had to manually go in and, and set a lot of filters and things like that. Mm -hmm. So the real advantage here was that, we, you know, we, now we have this automated platform that any user can go to without calling me first and having all the work done for them. They simply go there and they can define the geographic scope that they want to look at. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, the, the Tableau platform sorts all the data, does all the calculations and presents it in a much more clear and understandable manner than we had done before. And it's certainly better than telling somebody go and download 14 million rows of data. And, you know, I hope you really yeah. know how to, how to work with SQL. <laughs> Otherwise, you know, you're pr probably going to be out of luck there. Mm -hmm. So, so yeah, it, it, it's been pretty, um, groundbreaking, I think, in that way. Um, you know, internally, the staff was excited about it. Our board has been very excited. We had, I wish I had the counts in front of me. I, I think when we first released this and I sent out the emails to, um, to folks letting them know that they could come and play around with, with it and test it out, I, I quickly had to make an inbox rule for my email because every time somebody would, would fill out the form to access it, I would get an email. And <laughs> that, that just overwhelmed me instantly. So I had to create an inbox rule and we had, I think in the first few days, several hundred users come in and pull reports on their area. And, and it's interesting, you know, seeing that, that um, it, it's a pretty even split between uh, people in the industry, um, mm -hmm. people who, who are just regular users or members of NCRC, and uh, people who work for, for various bank regulators mm -hmm. that, are, that are coming in to play around with it and take a look at it. Because there really isn't a platform like this across any space. So, so that this ability to kind of look at a geography and see a holistic view of all the banking and lending activity that, that is at least public data mm -hmm. is something unique that, um, that I think there's a pretty strong demand for. It's one thing to have data. It's another thing to be able to understand that data, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. And, and th that's the challenge here is that you've got data that's locked into formats that are difficult 
to work with, difficult to view, difficult to understand and difficult to visualize. So it doesn't matter if it's not the largest data set in the world. Mm -hmm. The fact is it's, it's a critical one and it's locked in a format. It's locked in several formats that are difficult for the public to get to. And this solves that problem. It makes it a very nice, understandable, visual um, and interactive platform that I think is just fantastic. And the nice thing, you know, at this point, you know, after the, you know, our work together is that it's, it really is self-service for, for your members. Now it, it doesn't involve any sort of, manual intervention from you or your team or anybody right. else it's they go right. to you know this link and because they're a member they get to it or whatever and um, they can get to any region any area you know that, that that they want so they can drill down and see the entire united states if they want or just see you know albuquerque new mexico so i mean there's really um you know yeah. it, it, it really is you hear these this 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 phrase self-service analytics all the time. It really is a self-service product. Yep. Um, that's, mm -hmm. you know, very powerful and lots, lots, I think there's, you know, what 10, 15, 16 different dashboards in yep. there that you can really view and, yep. and drill down into, you know, numerous aspects of, of, of the data. Yeah. Yeah. It, yeah. It, it really is just fantastic. And, and um, you know, what I was, what I told Kevin after the first couple of weeks that it was out, you know, <clears throat> I noted that, that, I don't think Kevin appreciated, I don't think Kevin and Jeff appreciated it at first because they, they work with various types of data all the time. They're very comfortable with it. But for a, let, let's just take a community group. Uh, so, so say fair housing of, of Albuquerque, and that's not one of our members, but I, you know, I, I'm just playing off of Kevin's use of, of Albuquerque there. That might be two, three full-time staff, mm -hmm. uh, an organizer, probably a lawyer, you know, something, something like that it's very rare that groups this size have a real strong analytical capability that's organic to the organization. That's one of the things that they come to us for. We help with a variety of things, but, but helping them understand data and find data is important. But if they're meeting with lenders or if they're meeting with city officials or if they're meeting with community members and they're, and they're pitching you know, how they can help and how mm -hmm. they can assist with getting investment in low and moderate income areas, it helps a whole lot to be able to walk into that meeting knowing what you're talking about and bringing data that nobody else in the room has. Mm -hmm. And this tool does that. Um, we, we set it up so they can, they can, we prefer that they use the interactive version because you have all the bells and whistles there, mm -hmm. but depending on the environment they're in or the situations, the meeting, they can, they can still go ahead and create visuals off of this. They can export to PowerPoint if they need to, we encourage them not to, we, you know, we want them to, you know, try to stay within the, within the platform because they get a lot more, depth in the data that way mm -hmm. but <clears throat> i mean I, I don't think that kevin and, and, and jeff really understood that the, the the huge power shift that gives you when mm -hmm. you walk into a room of, of uh, you know of, of, of city officials or bankers and you can show them something that they don't know yet um, mm -hmm. that's pretty important new data changes decision making right so if you're going to walk into a meeting and trying to convince somebody of something being able to provide them with hard analyzed data on the backside yeah. is everything Right? It yeah, changes, yeah, it changes it, the entire conversation. Yeah. I mean, there's a saying around the office at NCRC that data drives the movement for, so, for economic justice. And, and this exemplified uh, that, that power. So, mm -hmm. uh, you know, there, there's, a, um, there's a warm place in our hearts for Kevin and Jeff at this point for, for, uh, for helping with this one. Well, it sounds like you guys have accomplished some absolutely incredible things with this project. And so, Kevin, it's been an, and always is an absolute pleasure to have the opportunity to work with you and, and to kind of learn from you and your team. And I've seen you guys apply this same kind of data analytics and technology to the receivables management industry for years. And to see that you guys are, are actually able to take that that knowledge and that expertise and apply it in a charitable format as well and, and assist with the community around you, I, I think really just exemplifies what Unifund and Recovery Decision Science really stands for as an organization. Um, so that's just really cool. And then Jason, I, I feel like every minute that I talk with you, I learn something new. So I, I hope that we can continue to have conversations into the future because the data that you guys are collecting and your ability to analyze that and unlock all of these different data streams, but then make them relevant to each other is really just an incredible feat in and of itself. Um, but then to be able to take that data set, be able to visualize it, realize it, and leverage it across 
a number of different avenues and empower these smaller organizations that are trying to improve their local communities by just giving them the power um, is really fantastic. And I can't thank you guys enough for coming on and participating in the discussion today. Yeah, yeah thanks, thanks for having us. Having Appreciate us. it. Absolutely. For those of you that are watching today, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, we will be tagging both of the guests here below. I'm sure that they would be happy to answer questions, and we'll also include some links to some of the public tableaus so that you can experience that data interaction for yourselves and get a better feel for the types of powerful data tools that are available to you. Um, again, always feel free to follow us on YouTube, LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter. We're all over the place on social media. And if you have any questions or guests that you'd like to see us interview, topics you'd like to see us cover, we're always happy to hear from you. But until next time, thank you, everybody. And gentlemen, I really appreciate your time today. Thanks, Thanks a lot, Adam. Me.